morning. Well, it's a pleasure to be here because, uh, please have a seat, please. Uh, you know, one of the most unique characteristics of uh, Bishop Eddie Long is that <clears throat> he takes the position that if he is going to lead, he has to present to you people who have succeeded in various categories. And he does that with no concern for his own status or how you may perceive him because somebody else may say certain words or have achieved certain things. That's not important. What's important is for you to have the knowledge and the exposure so that you can live the abundant life. And what he wants you to do is see someone who has been able to achieve enough for his family and his employees and his constituency, if you will, where the abundant life can and does exist. You see, if the preacher talks about the abundant life too much, y'all are gonna be so worried about how much of that is he gonna take. And that's not fair, because he has a right to live a life of comfort. So it's easier for me to say, listen, we live in a world, we live in a country that requires us to be contributors to a system. Now, if we lived in a communist nation, what would we be called? Communist. And if we lived in a socialist nation, what would we be called? Socialist. We live in a capitalistic nation, therefore we are capitalists. Now in the 60s, you remember those days, I, I do because I used to have a great afro, uh, a big afro, until it rained and then it started to fall. <laughs> but you know, then when we were talking about capitalism, it seemed to be a negative concept, you know. It's the, what is it? It's the slave master imposing on the slave and exploitation of that. Well, we kind of got tricked <clears throat> because we were so busy out here just trying to be relevant that we missed the truth of this country and the basis of this country, and that's capitalism. So I want to begin to make sure that as I stand here, and, I, and I'll also add, I, I, I spoke not too long ago to some of our uh, black power folk, and we have a lot of a activists, and I consider myself an activist. And uh, I remember we had the Black Power Conference at our hotel here in Atlanta, in Marietta. And uh, everybody was still sort of, you know, in their black Thames and brogans and, you know, uh, still black power. I support that concept. But I want to clarify it because uh, Nikki Barjan, who's my general manager, Nikki, you remember, I think. Uh, when, when we had all of our employees, we were, we were like this, and we had all of our employees ma march through, and they were giving you know, such good service that everybody applauded them. And as they came through, I said, now, let me describe what you just saw. Now, that's black power. Uh, how, many t how many times have people come up to you to give you their opinion of you? You know, the, and, and I gotta tell you, I think everybody you meet has an opinion of you. And they want you to change to become, I guess, somebody that they would like for you to be. But change is an interesting word, the bishop mentioned it today. You see, either you control change or change will control you. Now, those of us who are interested in business, we have to realize that this is a era, or we're in the middle of an era of change. Things are not gonna be the same on your jobs or in your businesses. I wanna inspire you to become business people. Uh, the bishop 
is here to call you to Jesus. I'm here to call you to capitalism and making money. Now, those aren't, you know, opposing issues, of course. They blend together. And they blend together in a variety of ways because as your message comes to you from the bishop, you have to interpret that message in different ways. I'll give you an example. When the message came to Noah that the flood was coming, the message wasn't to Noah, you better learn how to swim. The message was you need to organize and you need to build to support your family and the creatures that I will deliver to you. You need to organize and you need to plan. So as you worship, recognize that you are going to receive messages, but don't get confused by the message. It's not to just go swim, it's to organize and to build. We have to look into what will it take to build businesses. Now, frequently we don't recognize the concept of innovation. Sometimes you think to start a business you have to invent something. Well, that's not really true. You need to be innovative. Let me cite a few examples. Henry Ford did not invent the automobile. That was invented in Europe long before he started his process. And Henry met a guy by the name of Edison who was involved in a steel company and they learned how to fabricate steel. So Henry Ford became an innovator by creating a line an assembly line to allow for the mass production of the automobile. You follow me? Innovation. Second example. Uh, there was a guy who got a C uh, on his business plan at Harvard. And the plan related to taking a piece of cardboard. Now, we've all seen cardboard boxes. We know what a cardboard box has been around a long time but it's basically moving a cardboard box from point A to point B. He took his business plan that he got a C on and he opened up a business. That business is called Federal Express. Innovation, taking a cardboard box, having you put stuff in it and move it from point A to point B. Make sense? My final example is this. Bill Gates did not invent the computer. IBM and their engineers invented the computer, but he, in, he was innovative. He took the computer and he created an operating system that allowed for that computer to ultimately become a laptop. But then Bill Gates missed something, and that is access to the internet. And that's when the AOLs and the Googles and the search engines came along. And they made millions, innovation. And then Zuckerberg comes along with uh, social networking, Facebook, innovation. All of that stacked on top of the computer. Are you following me? Bishop, am I alone here today or what? Okay, I just want to check. <laughs> so what I'd like for us to do is think in terms of being innovative, being creative. I serve on the National Council uh, for innovation and entrepreneurship. I would have been here yesterday, but for the fact that I had to meet with the Secretary of Commerce, the, the Executive Administrator for SBA, and we were in Philadelphia. Uh, I passed, I had, we passed out a sheet that shows the President's Jobs Act. Do you have that, have copies of that? That literally came from the White House through the Secretary of Commerce to me uh, yesterday, and I'm delivering it to you. Now, this is, 